Hey there guys, it's Rick Huster here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. We're here at the Gamble Squirrel Master Classic. We are at the Southern Sportsman's Hunting Lodge outside Montgomery, Alabama. This is where they host the event. Been doing so for nine years, I heard today. So the ninth annual, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, Gamble's commitment to youth sporting, uh, or youth shooting, excuse me, youth shooting sports and youth hunting uh, is probably second to none in the industry. They they put the money where their mouth is, and they do this every year. They bring celebrities in, they bring 4-H young shooters in, some of which have never touched an air gun or never even gone squirrel hunting before. And they make this a big deal, and that is super cool. I will apologize right up front, the air conditioners had to get kicked on because it's warm. It's like almost 80 degrees. Uh, we got folks out in the woods right now hunting. I stayed back to shoot some of these videos, so uh, again, I, this is what I like to do. I know they're doing what they like to do. Unfortunately, I got that air conditioner going on and hopefully you guys will forgive that and hopefully enjoy this video anyway, even with that audio uh, maybe not being optimal. Besides all of that, let's talk about something that's far more interesting and that is the Gamo Bone Collector. This is the new Bone Collector Swarm Gen 3i. So what makes this different? Well, Really what makes it different is the new magazine system, okay? So I've talked about this on multiple videos. This is not new. This is the inertia-driven magazine. Now they've had this for a while. It used to only work properly on the Magnums. Now they've perfected it where it works on all their guns. So for the Fusion, to the Bone Collector, to the, to the Magnum, guess what? These new mags actually work and cycle properly, which is awesome. What it does is it helps you, it helps prevent double feeding because it only advances the pellet when you fire the gun and that's just a really cool feature. The bone collector is an interesting model from Gamo because you've got like the Maxim and now you have the new Viper which we've got a video on that which is really a nice air gun. You've got the Magnum on this end but in the middle, sort of in between this, We've got the Bone Collector. It's got more power than the Maxim and the Viper and the Fusion, but it doesn't quite have the power of the Magnum. It's also not nearly as hard to cock as the Magnum. So you get more energy, more power, more range, more accuracy at range, all of that good stuff for less cocking force. It's a great, great air gun. The way they've done it is that you can do it a couple different ways, but the way they've done it is they've increased the diameter of the of compression chamber to give more volume in here. By doing that, you get more power, and that's just awesome. Now, what does this put out for power? We'll actually do a video of this. I don't have one of these. I have the previous model, but we're gonna do a series on this. When I get back to Texas, we'll look at all the crony numbers. We'll shoot different pellets. We'll get trigger pull and, and DB, media, uh, DB you know, sound readings and all. We'll do all of that stuff. But today, we're just gonna do a little shooting, but because this is based on the last one, I can tell you, if you're at sea level, you're gonna get over 20 foot-pounds with this gun, which is pretty good in a 22 cal brake barrel. That is not shabby. It is a really solid performer. All right, so what am I doing? I'm gonna be shooting some red fire pellets. You guys are saying, Rick, why are you shooting the red fires? Because they work really, really well in the Gamma brake barrels, that's why. Uh, I could shoot some other stuff, but now, for hunting stuff, these things just perform really, really well. Now, we got a little wind coming up. We're not quite sure what the weather's going to be like. So, let's get right to some shooting, and we're going to just do some target shooting today. I'm at about 19 yards. I walked it off. It was like 19 and a half yards. I've got a couple targets out there, one of which is a new one I hadn't seen. I, if you watch the video on the Viper, I talk about this target. It's called their Pizza Box Target. It folds and creates... Uh, basically a cardboard box that you can orient either one way or the other and you get two targets on one side you get the bulls the other side you get a squirrel now we've already shot the squirrel with the viper now we're going to shoot the bulls uh, with the bone collector so I'm set up again at about 19 ish between 19 and 20 yards I've got this target and I've also got the gamma squirrel knockdown target if you guys haven't shot those, they're so much fun. If you, you could set up a, a short range in your backyard and just have so much, so much fun. When you shoot them, they fall down, you pull the string, they come back up, you shoot them again. It's literally hours of fun, let me tell you. All right, how many shots do I have? All right, so I gotta load my mag. The way this mag works is you click it or you rotate it until it clicks, insert your pellet, 
and then rotate it till it clicks and you just repeat until it's full. Um, again, the cool thing about this is when I cock the gun and it loads a pellet into the breech, it doesn't immediately advance to the next pellet. The gun, when the gun recoils, the inertia, hence the name inertia driven mag, the inertia from that recoil jars the magazine and it kicks to the next pellet. If you have to manually, you know, advance it, there's a little switch on the side, you kick the switch and it advances for you if you need to. But these new mags have been really, really good. Now I'm gonna start off with the little target, this guy right here. We're gonna go for the center bowl and let's, uh, let's see how I do. I was shooting, uh, I was sighting this in, I should say, a little earlier, right at the 20 yard mark. So we should be pretty much on. I am shooting the Gamo 3 to 9 by 40 scope, comes with the gun. Um, it's a good starter scope. Wish the parallax was adjustable. I'm gonna keep telling them that regardless, but all in all for a bundled optic, it's actually one of the better ones you're gonna get, um, uh, you know, out of the box. It did a, it's pretty good, pretty good scope. Okay, center target, let's see how I do here. A little low. Let's keep going, we'll do five shots. Looks like we're just a little low. Let's see how she groups, because if it's just a little low, boy, we can bring that right up with the scope adjustment. Oh yeah. I will tell you, shot the Viper a little bit a little bit ago, and the power difference between the Viper and this is noticeable. Not only can you tell the pellets getting to that target more quickly, um, but it's got more smack. Uh, I'll tell you, it, it's noticeable. This is probably right now my favorite brake barrel, uh, my favorite brake barrel from Gamo and probably my favorite brake barrel full stop uh, right at this point, because I don't know anybody else that builds, builds something like this. This thing is really good. Do one more. Now, I wanna tell you guys, um, people are saying, because I just posted a video recently, you got to do this and you got to do that and shoot so many pellets and clean the barrel and th look, this gun, out of the box, less than 10 shots to sight in, and those are my next shots. So I will tell you that while maybe five, six, maybe three years ago, all of that stuff might have been true, what Gamma was putting out now is really good stuff. You do need to know how to shoot it, however. If you're not used to the technique of shooting a brake barrel, you may struggle. Um, but learn the technique, and then you're gonna see some really great results. Now, hopefully I don't shank the shot. I should have done my fifth shot and then done that little speech. Let's see here. No, we're, we're like, I mean, like, like, come on, right? All right, so I'm gonna move over to the squirrel and I'm shooting just a wee bit low. <clears throat> I could probably aim for the top of the kill zone on that squirrel and be okay. Or I could use some of the other bulls and sight in my scope better. Let's do that, right? Okay, so I need to come up. Let's come up, that's like half an inch. Look at it here. It's like three quarters of an inch. Um, at 20 yards, math in my head. Let's do 10, 10 clicks up. Watch it be too many. Okay, I'm gonna shoot for the upper left bull. Oh, way too high. Okay, yeah, that was too many. All right, we'll bring it back down. I got too aggressive there. All right. That went a little too low. Split the difference. All 
I'm gonna go to the, the right bull so we have a nice clean target. It's cool when you have a target like this because you have all these different aim points. A little to the right. Up and down's good. I had a couple shots left. If we need to move it, we'll move it to the left a little bit, but let's see. Oh, there she is. Let's do one more. Let's do one more to see if we are shooting consistently or if I just got lucky. Let's see here. There's a carpenter bee buzzing, buzzing, buzzing around and I really don't like them. They, they don't really bother you and they don't really hurt you I, that I am aware of. Uh, I hope they don't, but I don't like them. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. All right, let's load up our mag, because we're out. So the mag has 10 shots. I believe the magazines are relatively affordable. Stocking up on extra mags, so when you go out in the field, go out in the woods hunting, or sitting at your bench in the backyard shooting, you can load up your mags ahead of time and just shoot and have fun. I really love what they've done with the multi-shot brake barrel full stop. Before, if you wanted to do something like this, it was CO2 or PCP or, you know, whatever. But now we've got power, accuracy, um, repeatable shots, all in something that all it needs uh, are some pellets and elbow grease and you're good to go. All right, let's smack some squirrel here. All right, we'll do five shots on that squirrel and see if I can knock it down five out of five. I, I know the gun can do it. Let's see if I can do it. It really hits with more authority than the Viper. I mean, big time. It's awesome. Last one, then we can wrap this up. Oh, <laughs> okay, four out of five. It's funny, I did the same thing with the Viper. We're gonna stop though, because I'll keep chasing that one shot. You guys get the idea, super, super cool air gun. This is the Bone Collector Swarm. Again, something they've had. It's not a new power plant per se, but the new feeding system, that's what's new, and it's awesome. Guys, that's gonna be it for now. My name's Rick Houston here with Airgun Web. You're home for old school airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching. I get that last shot. I can't just leave it hanging. I get that one, knock his butt down. Here, little squirrely, squirrely. Oh. There.